Hey everyone, and welcome to the basic video for T. Kinter with Python. Um, if you've ever wanted to make a program that looks like a Windows GUI, um, I don't really have one to kind of show you on my computer right now, but it just looks like a, a standard operating system program with like buttons and a text box and text entry fields, like your standard Windows GUI type software and you've wanted to make one of those with python well they have a module that comes with python you don't have to install it and it comes with it and it's called tkinter and it gives you access to make uh any type of windows gui and it's actually cross-platform so you can take the program and put it on mac or put it on linux and it looks like it was built for mac or linux or windows whatever you run it on um it's pretty simple to use and this is just going to be a really basic video showing you uh, kind of something you can you can make using tkinter. I'm not going to make anything crazy, uh, like any. I'm not going to make like a really big crazy application. This video is just designed to kind of show you how to throw buttons on the screen or text fields, and just kind of get started with it. Later on, I'll actually make a full blown application that does something that, um, that's pretty in depth. But this is just going to be a uh, it may be one or two videos long. We may get it all done in this video, but just how to start with tkinter. Um, so I've got our project made right here, and I'm going to make a Python file just called main. Uh, and you want to import the modules called tkinter, and it's spelled T-K-I-N-T-E-R. Uh, and what I do is I import tkinter as tk, so I don't have to type type out tkinter every time. Um and the first thing we want to do to actually make a window, uh, there's multiple ways you can kind of uh, use uh, certain design patterns or frameworks to kind of set your program up, but I'm just gonna do something real basic. I'm gonna make a variable called root, and it's gonna equal, we're gonna access the tkinter module, and just to make a window, there's an object called a tk object. It's capital T, lowercase k, and open close parentheses. Just doing this will make a window, but when you make a window, uh, I think if I just run this, it'll probably crash. I'm not sure. I've actually never ran it just doing this. Oh, it, the program just instantly closes out. So what we have to do, there obviously has to be a loop that spins through to keep this program running. Well, the TK object uh, that is a tkinter window has something called a main loop method it can run. So you just do root dot main loop and you run that method. This should bring a window up, although it's not gonna look very pretty. It, yeah, it's just a real small, basic window with nothing in it. Uh, so we can close that out. And main loop, I'm, gonna, I'm always gonna leave that at the bottom. So once we've made our window, we're gonna set a bunch of stuff up in it right here, and then at the very end, we're gonna call main loop, and that kind of runs our GUI application and keeps it going. Um, so everything that's in a tkinter window is made of widgets. Like everything in tkinter uh, is is widget based. So like a button is a widget, a label, which is just text you put on the screen, or it can be a, an image, but they're called labels. Uh, those are label widgets. You have uh, combo box widgets, radio button widgets. Um, and the best way to, like if you're wanting like a list of all the widgets and how to use them, you can just Google it. like. I'm gonna pull Python tkinter widgets, and there's a bunch of websites you can just go to. Um, like here's the official Python documents right here, uh, and you can go through. Here we go, widget uh, widgets. There's a combo box, a spin box. I don't even know what a spin box is, um, but you can click on it and kind of find out how it works. There's a notebook, a progress bar widget, a separator, which is just a little line. Um, a tree view widget, which I think is kind of like a, uh, it kind of gives you like a directory structure where you can throw items and they look like they, they branch off into different paths. Um, uh, there's menus. Um, this actually, let me, let me find, there's a website I usually always run into when I look up tkinter widgets. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. So I found the website. It's called, uh, fbot.org so effbot.org this is the one i always go seem to wind up on when i'm looking uh how to use these widgets the tkinter module is kind of it's not hard to find documentation on but it's 
uh, if you've ever used Pygame, like from my Pygame series, the Pygame documentation is awesome. Like it's super easy to use and read and understand how everything works. Tkinter is a little bit more confusing. Um, there's a, a ton of websites with kind of how to use it. There's a bunch of YouTube videos on how to use it. And you just watch all that stuff and kind of learn it. But it's not as easy as Pygame to find really good documentation. But if you go to fbot.org, this is the one I kind of use, and you can just click on, oh, here's a label. How do you use a label? And it gives you a bunch of examples on how to make one and put it on the screen and what types of, what types of arguments it takes. Um, so I don't know what we're going to make right here, but we're just going to throw some widgets on the screen. Um, so we've made our window. And the first thing I'm going to put is we can actually set up how big do we want the window to be. So you can do root.geometry, and that's uh, that takes one argument, and it's how big do you want the actual window to be, and it's kind of funky. It takes a string as the argument, and it needs to be width x height. So we can do like 400, uh, 400 for the width and 300 for the height. And if we run it, uh, oh, I spelled geometry wrong. Dumb. There we go. Uh, so now if we run it, it's 400 by 300. Another thing you can do, see how I can resize it? Uh, maybe you don't want your user to be able to resize it because it would kind of jack up the display. Uh, you can also do root.resizable, and then it, it takes two parameters, uh, the horizontal resizing and vertical resizing, and you can pass true or false for either one. So we can do false, false. And that'll make it where uh, the user cannot resize the window at all. So that's good. Uh, the next thing you can do is root.title. And you can pass in what you actually want the title of the window to be called. So you can do my awesome application. And if you run it now, it'll say my awesome application at the top. So now how do we start putting stuff on the window? Um, well, let's make a oh, let's just make something that looks like a, a user login. Like it says username has a username field to type in and a password and a, a password label and a password field to type in and then like a submit button. Um, so the first thing we need to do is make a, uh, a label. So we'll do uh, username. Well, this is kind of my I don't know the standard naming convention that people use for Tkinter projects because I've I've never really seen any projects except examples online um, but what I do if I'm ever making a label I always call the variable lbl underscore and then what I want to call it so this will be label username and it's gonna enter we're gonna access TK and dot and there's a label object in there now it there's a lot of different arguments you can throw into this label object and the first one is always, hey, what window are we throwing this label on? Because you can have multiple windows. Well, our program only has one right now. It's got root. So we're going to throw this label on the root uh, tkinter object. And then the next thing are key, argument, uh, key arguments that you can pass in. So one of the key arguments is text. And that's what text, what do you want the label to say? So we're going to say username, colon, and then a space. And that's really all you need for the label. Now, uh, one thing that's kind of confusing at first, doing this, if I press play, you don't see it on the screen. And that's because we never told it to put it on the screen. We made it, and this stored that object in memory, but we haven't said, hey, put this, actually show this on the screen. So the next thing you can do is you can do label username. We can access that label object and do dot pack. Now, this isn't the best way to do this, but it's the easiest to demonstrate. Uh, so if we press play now, now we have a username, and it's just kind of thrown in the center of the screen. Uh, what pack does, uh, pack will just say, hey, wherever there is space to throw this object, just throw it on the screen. It doesn't really let you tweak its coordinates or anything. It just throws it wherever it'll fit. So you typically, I only use pack for quick debugging and trying to throw stuff on the screen to see if it'll work correctly. But what you want to use is grid. Uh, so if you do grid, you can actually supply coordinates to, uh, oh, my phone went off. Uh, let's go back to pack real quick, just so I can show it on the screen. What you need to do is when you look at this, envision like a grid system on here, like an Excel spreadsheet, and there's actual cells on here, even though you can't see them. 
Um, and when you do grid, you can pass in the row, uh, which starts at zero. So we'll do row zero, and then you pass a column equals zero. Uh, and this will actually put it at the top left. So if we do, there you go. Now username shows at the top left. There are other um, keyword arguments you can throw in here, or like a lot of keyword arguments you can throw in here and really customize certain things. Uh, we'll do some of those later, but not right now. But just know you can pass a row and a column and imagine a coordinate system on the window itself. So the next thing we need to do is make uh, an entry field, which is just a single line of text field where the person can type in their username. And I always, my, my convention I use is I type ENT for entry and underscore username. So this is the entry field for the username. Now, you see how I accessed tkinter and then I accessed the label object from within tkinter? You can, uh, you just do tk.entry to access the entry object. In a second, I'm, when we get down to the button, I'm actually going to do something a little different, but I'll explain it when we get to the button later on. Uh, I was going to do it with this entry field, but I don't think we need to. So the entry field's the same way. We're going to put it on the root window, and uh, really that's all we need right now. We don't. It, it has some other keyword arguments you can pass in, like uh, I think one's called show, which we'll probably use. It, it looks like this. You can do show and then assign it something. And we're probably gonna use that for the password field. And that's where if someone types in a password, it doesn't show plain text that they're typing in. You can have it put the stars so it, uh, it's secure. No one can look at a password over someone's shoulder. Uh, but for right now, for username, we're just gonna do root. And then we'll do entry username dot grid. The row is still gonna be zero, but it'll be column one. So it puts it to the right. So now we have the username label and uh, the uh, entry field right there. And there's other uh, keyword arguments you can pass into this entry field that'll control like how wide the box is and all that stuff. And you can just Google like how to look up examples on how to do that. When we go into the more advanced tutorial, when we actually build an application, um, we'll, we'll for sure do that. And I'll show you how to set all that up. So now let's do the, the password field. So we'll do label password equals tk label it's going on our root window and the text is going to say password and then label password dot grid and now this is going to be row number one and column zero Whoop. row one column zero so now let's make sure that works now we have username password and then let's do the entry fields. We'll do entry password equals tk dot entry. It's going on our root. And then entry password dot grid. And this will be row one, column one. So now it's starting to look like a login screen. We got the username, password. Now let's get the button to work. Or just put a button on the screen. So for button, I do btn underscore We'll call it login, so button for logging in. Now, uh, up to this point, you've seen me do TK, and we could type TK button, and I, I actually am going to do this real quick, but we're going to change it in a second. So the button object is going to take what window do you want to put it on? We want to put it on root. It also can take a text variable, and we'll just call it uh, log in. And the other thing a button can take is a command. So when you click this button, what function in our code do you want it to run? So I'll do command equals, and for right now, it's not going to do anything. We're just going to pass none into it because we'll come back and make that later. And we need to put the button on the screen. So button login dot grid is going to be row two, column zero. So our button should show up on the screen. Okay. So there's our button right there. You can click it. It doesn't do anything because command is set to none. Uh, but if you kind of notice, uh, and I think the entry fields as well, uh, these are kind of dated buttons. They look like, uh, I guess, Windows XP or Vista Windows 7. They don't look like modern Windows uh, widget buttons. And there's a way to change that. So if you go up here to our imports if you do from tkinter there is there's like another module within tkinter that has newer style widgets 
So you can do from tkinter import ttk. So the ttk module inside of the tkinter module actually contains newer style widgets that look more modern to Windows 10. Uh, so uh, it doesn't affect all, like a label is a label. A label doesn't matter. It's going to look the same no matter if you use TTK or TK. Um, but this button and I believe the entry fields look a little different. What we can do is instead of TK.entry, do TTK.entry. We'll do that there as well. And the buttons look dramatically different. So TTK.button. And now we can see what it looks like. Yeah, see the entry fields have that real thin black line around them now. It looks more modern. And the login buttons actually look like Windows 10 style login or uh, just buttons. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is get the button to actually work. It's not going to log us into anything because this is just a basic tutorial on how to just throw Windows on a screen and get kind of started with tkinter. Uh, but we'll just make it say uh, uh, login. And we need to make a method called login. So we'll put that up here. So login, and all it does is it prints out you have logged in. So we'll go ahead and click that. And okay, so let me go over that real quick. So for, for command, I assigned it a function I named, I, I made called login. And all login does is print to the console you have logged in. Uh, one thing to note, where I put command and I put the function login, I did not put the parentheses like you would normally type in a function. You would normally every time you type a function, you print or type the parentheses. But what that does is anytime you type a method or a function and you put those parentheses there, it calls that function right when the interpreter gets to that line of code. It says, oh, it reads a function called login, execute it. But we're not wanting to actually execute it right here. We're only wanting to execute it when we actually click the button. So by taking away these parentheses, it stores that function into this button object, but it doesn't run it. Now, one thing you might run into, and it, it took me a minute to figure this out when I was learning tkinter, is what if your function that this button calls, what if it requires parameters? So what if login required like an I don't know a name and it prints uh, uh, we'll just do like a f string real quick so it prints out something like that wait hold on one second that's uh oh, I'll put the f in the wrong spot yeah there we go so what if our login function requires a name argument and it prints your name you have logged in and then down here, when we run the login method, you obviously you cannot put the parentheses there because you don't want to execute it when it's creating this button object. You want only want it to execute when you're clicking it. Uh, so you would think you would type something like that, like that's my name, Jody. But when you do this, as soon as we run the program, it executed that, but I never clicked the button. And the way you get around that is something called a lambda function. And the sin, if you're not used to these, the syntax, the syntax looks pretty funky, but um, the, it works and you just get used to doing it. So you can do lambda, which is a keyword in Python. And actually, it's been a minute since I've done one of these. Um, after the word lambda, you can type the function name and then pass in the argument. So, uh, and I think actually after lambda, we got to put a colon. So it's lambda colon and then the function name with the argument in it. And what this does is it creates a function with this argument stored in it, but it doesn't execute it. It just like preloads it. So now when we run our program, see now it didn't run the uh, login function, but we can click login and now it runs it with the, with the argument Jody passed in. And I can fill out all the username and password stuff, but let's actually, let's get that password field to where it shows stars. And I think the, yeah, TK entry. Yeah, so our our password entry field, I think it's a keyword called show, and you pass what you want it to show for the characters. So you can put an asterisk. Yeah, and then now we can do J, and uh, you can just type whatever, but it shows asterisk for the uh, actual characters. So yeah, that was just, this is just a real quick video on how to kind of get started with tkinter and understanding widgets. There's a ton of widgets. There's uh, there's text entry fields, there, which is what we use, but there's also a text widget, which is a big box where you can type a bunch of text in it. 
there's radio buttons. Um, there's a lot of variables are kind of strange in Tkinter, but again, once you get used to them, they're pretty easy. Uh, like at, like uh, retrieving text that was typed into a text box and retrieving that and storing it in a variable in Python. Um, once we build the application, which is my next tutorial series is probably going to be on Tkinter, we'll build a full-blown applica application. We'll use probably the majority of the widgets, and you'll see how everything works. But, yep, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments, and everybody have a good one.